welcome this is the next module uh, in the lab orientation uh, part of the microfabrication course if you remember correctly uh, in our in one of our previous modules we have looked at uh, general how microfluidic uh, devices looks like and how uh, what is a peristaltic pump what are the different types of pumps used peristaltic and uh, syringe pumps we had discussed uh, then uh, like how to flow how to load uh, samples into the pump how to flow liquids so those things uh, we had discussed so that time we had i had shown you uh, in the microfluidic device channels certain patterns and uh, how liquid will be flowing through that but then how are these patterns made how are these micro channels made so microfabrication processes will be used to make these channels that is why the, the the use of microfluidic devices becomes relevant to the scope of this course so today in this module uh, this will be an extended module today in this module we will uh, run you through uh, a very important portion or a part of a microfluidic channel fabrication which is pdms molding so uh, what we will do is we have a master or a mold a master mold uh, which we have fabricated with silicon and on using that uh, master mold we will be uh, pouring pdms curing it and making channels out of it so that whole process we will show it to you what is pdms pdms is polydimethyl serine so uh, it is it is a form of silicon uh, that is very transparent once it is cured in its native normal room temperature form it is a thick viscous fluid and once we do um, subject it to a certain set of process heating processes along with adding a, a something called a curing agent the pdms viscous liquid solidifies to to a rubbery elastic but solid transparent membrane which is very good for making microfluidic channels so the channels will be engraved on this pdms membrane and that membrane we can stick onto an another substrate that might have a sensor like an electrode or even uh, stick it onto a glass slide inside which we can flow the uh, liquids so this is the overall idea so uh, today as i told we will be actually doing the silicon uh, pdms molding using a silicon master what is a master master is a mold which has the patterns on it which will form the negative structures on the pdms mold so uh, let's see what is the pattern we are trying to make so i have with me here a silicon mold can you see the pattern on its surface so as i told this is the silicon master uh, we will be using to make the microfluidic channels as you can see the uh, channel dimensions are embossed on the silicon wafer how was this silicon master made so we took a silicon normal silicon wafer p type silicon wafer which usual silicon wafer dimensions are around 500 microns thickness then we deposited oxide layer on top what after that what we did is we did photolithography of the pattern on of this pattern these are the microfluidic channels these will, now they are coming as elevated structures uh, now they are coming as elevated structures these will come as channels on the pdms because negative of this will form on the pdms on top of this only we will pour pdms as we told so silicon wafer we will take the silicon wafer is around 500 microns in thickness then we will have an oxide layer on top then we will do photolithography we will pattern the surface of this wafer using photolithography so that we will get this pattern then we will remove the uh, photoresist after developing it uh, after developing it we will have the pattern formed on on the uh, surface of the wafer then what we will do we have to do something called deep reactive ion etching so wherever the pattern is not supposed to be there we will etch away the silicon material so that only the pattern remains as an embossed structure on top using we what we use the process we use is what deep reactive ion etching i think reactive ion etching you would have covered in the theory uh, or if not you will be covering it so reactive ion etching uh, is used and then it will etch out the uh, pattern like this on the silicon wafer surface once that is done we will remove the uh, photo resist from the from the rest of the uh, wafer and then yes we will have the silicon master mold with us once this mold is ready with us we are good to go 
to do PDMS molding. Today we will be doing uh, PDMS molding basically of this channel on the PDMS membrane. So for this we have made this uh, setup for the experiment. So what all things do we need? So this is PDMS, it will be a highly viscous liquid. So see, silicon elastomer that is what it is generally called. It is called silicon elastomer that is what it is generally called. So it is basically PDMS. It's a, it's a 1 kg bottle, we will use very less quantity of that around 50 ml. Then this is the curing agent. So this is another chemical. So this, this curing agent is what will make the PDMS become solid after sufficient time. Uh, so we have to mix PDMS and curing agent in 1 is to 10 ratio. So uh, 1 part of curing agent and 10 parts of PDMS that is the usual mixing ratio. After once we do that, <coughs> once we mix it, we have to stir it continuously for 10 minutes so that they get mixed properly. In the stirring process, lot of air bubbles will be formed in the mixture. But air bubbles should not be there in our membrane because we need it to be a very clear transparent membrane. Then what we will do this mixture, we will keep inside a desiccator unit and depressurize it so that all the air bubbles will start coming out. Once that process completes, that will need around 20-25 minutes. Once that process completes, uh, we will get a very clear liquid of the PDMS clearing agent, clear, uh, curing agent mix. Once that mix is ready, we will take that mix and pour it on a petri dish that is containing our silicon master. Once that is ready, we will have a dish containing the PDMS and curing agent mix with the silicon master at the bottom. That dish then we will keep it at around 60 to 70 degrees Celsius for 2 to 3 hours inside the oven. Then it will after that if you take it out we will feel see we will see that the PDMS has be, become cured and it has become a solid layer. Then whatever dimensions we need we can cut out that PDMS from it. This is the overall process which we will be showing it to you today. So what all things do we have? What all equipment do we have? We have our silicon, silicon master which is in a wafer carrier. We have a <coughs> 135 mm glass petri dish where, where we will keep our uh, silicon master. We have a SS or stainless steel tweezer to handle our wafer. We have a stirrer. This stirrer is used to thoroughly mix the PDMS and the curing agent. 50 ml tube where we can mix the PDMS and the curing agent before we pour it on the onto the petri dish. And we all also have a 15 ml tube for in case we need it uh, during the process. And obviously we have the PDMS and the curing agent with us. So these are the major things that we need for doing this experiment. At the end of the experiment you will be able to see a PDMS membrane clearly getting formed. So we have taken 50 ml of PDMS here, 50 ml PDMS and 5 ml of curing agent. Now we will mix it in this petri dish. So first let me add the PDMS. So if you see closely observe you will see that it is a very viscous chemical. It is basically another form of silicon. <coughs> so if you can see the petri dish, you will see that lot of air bubbles have formed in this. So we have to have a proper process to remove the air bubbles, otherwise this air bubble will form artifacts in the uh, final PDMS layer that will be formed using the silicon master. So that is why we will be using the desiccator which I explained before. So I am just waiting for the whole PDMS to get poured because we have measured 50 ml. So let us maximum from the tube go to the petri dish. So if you just, I will just till the petri dish, if you see it, you will see lot of air bubbles in it. So these air bubbles have to be removed at some point. Now we are adding the 5 ml curing agent to this mixture. <coughs> so we have added 5 ml curing agent. Now we have to mix it thoroughly as we have discussed. So we use a glass stirrer. Why are we using glass? Glass is a very inert 
material so it will not react with the chemicals that is why most of these uh, uh, equipment like petri dishes and all are made of glass this is a very general knowledge but then many people don't know that that so that's why we are discussing that so we are using a glass stirrer as you can see so with the glass stirrer we have to thoroughly stir the pdms and curing agent so i am stirring it see this is how we should stir it we should stir it for almost 10 minutes so we have now thoroughly mixed the pdms and curing agent for 10 minutes more than 10, 10 minutes actually you can see the mix now it is full of bubbles we cannot use it directly actually this is the mix we need to, to make the mold but then with these bubbles this is the same layer that will form as a thick solid once we cure it but then lot of bubbles are there inside which is not desirable we need to remove all the bubbles so we have thoroughly mixed the pdms and curing agent for 10 minutes and uh, the mix is now ready but then as you can see very clearly that the mix has lot of air bubbles in it lot of air bubbles which is not desirable because this is a mix that we have to pour on our uh, silicon master and once it becomes solid these air bubbles if they are there no they will they will form part of the layer then it will not be transparent and we will not be able to see what is beneath the channels will be formed at the bottom of this membrane effectively the membrane that will be formed so it is very important that this liquid mix fluid mix should be free of air bubbles so the next process is to remove the air bubbles from this mixture how do we do that we do that using a vacuum desiccator and a vacuum pump we have already seen in prior uh, modules how the vacuum desiccator and the vacuum pump are used now we will see the actual practical application of it what we will do now is we will keep this dish inside the desiccator so i am opening the lid of the desiccator now we will keep this dish inside the desiccator okay now we have kept the dish inside the desiccator we are closing the lid now we will connect our vacuum pump to the inlet of the desiccator <coughs> and now we will switch on our vacuum pump so just now we saw uh, the air bubbles see air bubbles are accumulating at the top of the uh, you have seen uh, as a close up uh, videos grab where the air bubbles are accumulating at the top of the dish all the air bubbles are coming out so as and when the all the air bubbles come out it will become a clear solution so it will take around 25 to 30 minutes <coughs> to <coughs> to remove all the air bubbles uh, from the uh, mixture so we have taken 5 ml of the curing agent in this tube now we have to mix this first in another tube so as i told we will be adding pdms and curing agent in curing agent and pdms in 1 is to 10 ratio that is one part of curing agent and 10 parts of pdms so because we have added 5 ml of curing agent we have to add 50 ml of pdms so now right now uh, he is adding 50 ml of curing agent so now we have desiccated it for almost 15 minutes uh, to remove the uh, air bubbles what we have done we have kept the pdms curing agent thoroughly mixed it had lot of air bubbles in it <coughs> we kept it inside uh, the desiccator and we are trying to suck out air and create vacuum in the, inside the desiccator in that process what happens whatever air bubble is embedded within the liquid it comes to the surface because it is getting pulled by the environment so all the air bubbles will first come to the surface they form a thick air bubble area like when you open a, a, a what you call a, a fizz drink a carbonated drink bottle when you open you will see all the bubbles coming to the surface right like that these bubbles will come to the surface and again as and as and when we still continue taking uh, air out of the desiccator these bubbles will start escaping from the surface so over time all the bubbles will escape from the liquid from the bulk of the liquid and from the surface of the liquid and eventually the liquid will become uh, very very clear now we will take out the liquid and see how uh, clear it is so we have switched off the desiccator now we have we cannot directly take out because it will create a shock inside and that the, uh, the petri dish may vibrate or th get thrown away inside because there is no uh, air actually inside so we are slowly recreating we are depressurizing we are removing the vacuum inside
So now air is rushing back into the <coughs> desiccator. Once that is done, we are removing the desiccator. Now we will see how, how clear the liquid has become. We are taking it out. Now see, it is very, very clear now. It is a very, very clear liquid. You, can, you cannot even see whether the liquid is there inside. That It is that clear. Now this clear liquid we have to pour on top of our uh, mold. So we have the mold here, we have put it in a petri dish. Now we have to pour our PDMS curing agent mix on top of the mold. Try to focus there, only there, only there. So as and when we pour, more air bubbles are getting formed. So we have to do one more level of desiccation to remove the air bubbles in the second round of pouring the PDMS onto the mold. So we are pouring the PDMS onto the mold. This process also creates air bubbles. So now we have fully poured. I cannot tell this and show you because it will affect the surface profile of the PDMS. So now we have poured the PDMS on the mold. It is evenly distributed but there still it has formed few air bubbles. Now we have to do the desiccation process again with the PDMS on the silicon mold and then remove these air bubbles also. So this, this one I am taking it, putting it again back inside the desiccator. I will put the desiccator back into view for you. Now we have put the PDMS and the silicon mold. So we have we have kept the petri dish with the PDMS curing agent mix after removing air bubbles. We have put it on the mold. Now the mold, PDMS, everything is there. We have to again while while in the process of pouring the PDMS on the mold, some air bubbles got formed. So now we are again closing it. So with these air bubbles also we have to remove. Now These air bubbles also we have to remove now. So what we will do, we will again desiccate it. Now this process is very clear to you. We have to desiccate it now. We have connected the pump. Now we are taking out air from it. So this will remove the air, air bubbles second time. Like last time, the last time there were millions of air bubbles actually inside. Now it is few hundreds. So these air bubbles won't take much time to clear. So maybe around five minutes it will take and these air bubbles will get cleared and again we will we'll get a very clear solution on top of the silicon mold. So now uh, we have performed the second round of desiccation for almost 10 minutes to remove the uh, air bubbles that were formed again when we poured PDMS on the silicon master. So now we have desiccated it, most of the air bubbles around the device is gone and we have got a clear layer of PDMS on top of our silicon master. So this is what we are having. So we have this much thick layer of PDMS on top of the silicon master. Because it is so clear now, you will not be able to even make out that there is a liquid on top of the master. But actually the PDMS uh, curing agent mix is there on top of it. Okay. Now the next step is to cure it. What, what do you mean by curing it? We have to keep this at around 70 degrees Celsius for a couple of hours, 2 to 3 hours. 
it though, though that the PDMS will solidify, it will undergo a chemical change where uh, so that uh, the physical properties will change and it will become uh, a solid uh, rubbery material which we can stick onto another surface like a silicon wafer or a glass uh, slide. So let us keep this inside the oven. So the operation of the oven also we have uh, shown you before. So we have kept set the temperature of the oven to 70 degrees Celsius. So we will keep the glass slide in the oven. So we have kept it inside. This is for the curing process. After keeping it inside, we are closing the door. Now we have to leave this for around 2 hours. After that we will see, we will take it out and see how the uh, PDMS layer has been formed. So we have uh, made, we had, we had prepared PDMS and, uh, and the curing agent, air bubbles were there. Uh, we uh, removed the air bubbles two times, first when we prepared the, we had prepared the PDMS uh, with the curing agent, uh, first removed the air bubbles with the mixture, then we had poured PDMS onto the uh, mold, silicon mold and removed uh, air bubbles from there also using a desiccator. Then we had kept it in the oven for the curing process. So the, it has been inside the oven for the last two and a half hours now. Now by now it would have cured properly. Now uh, we will take out the uh, petri dish that contains the silicon mold and the PDMS on top and see how it has come. So this is the uh, petri dish with the silicon mold and the PDMS. So now if you, you might not be able to see because the PDMS has formed a very clear surface on top of the mold. It is almost like glass and you are not able to distinguish which is the glass bottom, petri dish bottom surface and which is the PDMS surface. Now next step is to cut out the PDMS membrane with the pattern with the required size uh, that we need. And remaining area also has a PDMS which we can cut it out also to see how the PDMS has got formed. So first we will cut out from a normal area with, which is not under the mold pattern and show you how PDMS after curing looks like. And then after that we will, so for cutting out the PDMS from the glass petri dish, the main things that we need are a very sharp knife so that we can make fine features on the PDMS membrane. And a metal scale, you need a metal scale because the cutter should not cut out the plastic if it is a plastic scale. A metal scale to take your measurements, steel tweezers so that you can peel off the PDMS membrane from the glass slide and finally you need to have aluminum foils to because once the mold is formed the mold gets stuck onto your glass plate. So that you have, you have to reuse your mold, to reuse your mold you have to cover your petri dish with uh, aluminum foil or some sealing. Uh, material so that you can reuse it otherwise a lot of dust will get settled on top of the mold and it becomes non reusable. So let us see how we can cut out now we will cut out PDMS from an uh, outer area not from top of the mold to show you how after molding the PDMS membrane looks like. I am left handed today. So we are trying to peel off uh, the whole membrane so we are taking it out from the edges. So you can see the membrane getting peeled off. So we are making a boundary around the petri dish so that the whole membrane we can take out. See uh, so uh, we are coming covering the edges, the mold is in one part of the
so now we'll try to peel it off so you can see you can slowly see now the membrane see it is very clearly visible it's a very transparent membrane then we are peeling it off now see it is very transparent but flexible also it is like glass but flexible it's like flexible glass we have to be very careful around the mold because the mold will get uh, stuck on to the bottom of the dish so till the mold we will take out and then try to uh, see how we can take out the pdms around the mold separately so uh, we have removed pdms from around the wafer so this is how the pdms after curing looks like so see this is how the pdm this is a pdms that was formed around the silicon mold see how flexible it is so preferably you should hold it either with a gloves or tweezer please never hold it with your bare hands so this is how the pdms will look like it's flexible and fully transparent see the thickness this is how how thick it will be and it will be flexible now we have now the, our core area we have to do we have to peel off the pdms on the surface of this silicon mold you see the pattern here so the pattern is here so we need to take the pdms below this pattern so that's what we are going to do let's do the peeling off process so so we have to be very 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 careful while doing this so slowly we are taking it out then somebody should parallelly hold the dish because it is glass it should not slip and then slowly take it out so now uh, we have cut across the pdms membrane around the mold and we are now taking it out as you can see uh, so the pattern is there i think very clearly your pattern is visible here so see the pattern has been formed the pattern that is there on the silicon master has formed on the membrane now we will see the membrane's other side to see that the pattern is formed yeah see against my yeah you can see the pattern here the pattern has very nicely got formed on the pdms membrane and it will be a channel here it will be a ridge in the wafer and on the wafer it will be a ridge here and on the membrane it is a channel this is how we make pdms based microfluidic channels the next task is to cut out the device without uh, required dimensions that we can do with a uh, knife and then we can cut it out uh, with our whatever dimension we need because now this uh, membrane is circular now the membrane is circular but we need to make a rectangular shape out of this membrane so that is the next final task and then once that is done we can store this device now this is also a device this pdms membrane is a device which can which we can stick on to an electrode or or a glass slide so we have to cut it out to a required shape and store it in aluminum foil or any other storing material so now we are cutting the channels into a rectangular shape we have already made a cut here to remove this piece and now we will be making another another side of the device the device is here and we are going to cut it out so another dimension we have made once the membrane is ready and it is successfully removed from the master it is a relatively uh, easier task to cut it out but remember always be very careful with your silicon master it is a very expensive piece of device that we have made so and once you have removed peeled off your pdms membrane then it is okay you can just cut it out to, to your required dimension so now we have made all four directions with a metal scale we have cut now we will remove the extra material around that square uh, rectangular portion yes that is removed now we have peeled off 
the extra PDMS membrane and made a rectangular portion for our device. Do not make sure that you do not reach with your tweezer to your device area, keep it far away from it and you can see that device, you can see the device also here, in this region against white background, no, against black background. Yeah. So, anyway you might have seen the device, yeah you can see the device here, now yes so that is the device. So, make sure that you do not contaminate it with air, so we have to quickly pack it off in aluminum foil and store it for use. So, we will put it in an aluminum foil and then we will store it for use. So, people, uh, so students I think now you have got a very good idea of how using a silicon master, microfabricated silicon master you can make a good nice thick. Uh, PDMS membrane like this with your micro channel in it. So, this is a very important process in microfluidics fabrication and it is very important that you know each and every single step and the importance and purpose of each of the step, each of these steps in the whole process. So, once the media membrane is ready as I have told you can stick it on to a glass light or a silicon wafer that may, may or may not have sensors, they may have electrodes or they might be pure optical analysis based uh, devices. So, how do we bond PDMS membrane to glass? So, that is done through a method called oxygen plasma bonding. So, we have fabricated the PDMS mold as you have seen. So, you, I, you have understood the whole process as I just explained that how, how important each process is. So, once the membrane or the channels are ready in the PDMS, we can bond or stick. Stick is the colloquial word, if you are working in a technical field, so you, you should use the tec technical term. So, that is bonding, you need to bond your PDMS membrane with a substrate, that the substrate might have sensors which may be electrodes, heaters or any other met metal or material that might be deposited on your substrate or it might be a very clean glass slide also and your device might work on optical measurement basis alone. So, you can bond your PDMS with glass or with say a silicon wafer. So, here we have a glass slide with gold electrodes patterned on it using photolithography. Are you able to see clearly? So, this is a glass slide with, so this is a glass slide where we have patterned gold electrodes using photolithography. So, what we will do? We have to first clean the glass slide properly so that there are no contaminants. Then we have to coat it with gold, okay, so that you can use methods like sputtering which you have learnt in the theory. You sputter a fixed the thickness of gold on, on the glass slide, then you pattern it after doing PR coating and then exposure using a mask aligner or, photo, or a general photolithography machine and then you form your pattern, then you will expose it. Then once your pattern is formed, you will etch off the remaining gold using a gold etchant like KI. So, then finally, you will have your gold electrode. On this gold electrode, you can bond your microfluidic channels. So, make sure that you do not touch the device. So, like this, you can bond your microfluidic channel with your electrodes, aligning your channel with the electrodes. Once that bonding is done, your device is ready, especially a microfluidic device will be ready. How do we bond it? Bonding is done through a method called oxygen plasma. So, we are not going, going to the details of how that is done, but this is how bonding is done. Similarly, bonding can also be done to silicon wafer. So, next is we have another, another uh, glass light, this is a heater use that is patterned using nickel. So, similar methods you, you first coat nickel so like deposit nickel and then you uh, uh, pattern it using photolithography and then again you can use microfluidic channels on top of this uh, nickel electrodes. So, this is not an electrode, this is a heater, it is still an electrode but it is the construction is different, its purpose is to just heat to a particular temperature. So, that if you have biological experiments, you can maintain your samples at a particular temperature. So, hope this you got an overall wholesome idea of how a microfluidic device will be fabricated, how microfluidic channels are made, how electrodes are patterned on glass or silicon wafers, then how do you bond it. 
So hope you have got a good idea of the whole process like the way you have learned in theory you have seen it in practice being fabricated uh, in our uh, lab series. Uh, uh, hope this was useful to you. Thank you.